Hey guys, it's Kay from KS Anonymous and I am back today with another episode of r slash we won't call you. Posted this on r slash choosing beggars and was told you guys might enjoy it. A masterclass in how not to get hired. I'm 18 years old and didn't finish college because of lockdown, so I need a job. I failed all my GCSEs, but I got into college and I'm studying art and media for A-level and I haven't finished yet, but I would have passed so it counts. I was a bit of a legend in school and I'm very outgoing, so I think I'll fit in well at any workplace. I want some boys to have a laugh with and go for drinks with after work. I don't want any job that involves customers. I can't deal with rude idiots. I'd much prefer a part-time office job or something to get my mum off my back. I won't lower myself to minimum wage, so make sure it's decent pay. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, hey, if if someone hires him after that, I mean, shoot. All right. I just had a candidate turn in his interview paperwork with these answers. The questions we ask have nothing to do with his answers. He had already made weird comments about my voice when we talked on the phone, but I brushed it off. Now I can clearly see that I shouldn't have. Goals. 1. Tallahassee, Florida. 2. Income goal as much as possible. Year 1. 100,000. Year 5. 200,000. Year 10. 1 million. Number 3. Work with pretty women party with them in cool places like the pictures in the info packet you sent <laughs> number four be around <coughs> pretty women as much and as close as possible my motivators are women and surviving to be with them yes leadership appeals to me good chance to make more money expectations yes no no Yes. Questions of mine. When is the earliest I can start partying with the women in the info packet? No other questions until we talk. <coughs> Creep! 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 The only two people to fail my fast food interview. I've just discovered this sub and thought I'd chime in with my stories. I'm now a manager in an office job, but my first was in a fast food restaurant of high renown. After about a year of being there, I started helping out with conducting on-the-job interviews. Now, all in all, these were basically just a formality, and I would say 95% of the people I interviewed, while nervous and overwhelmed, usually first job and there's a lot of beeping sounds going on, none of which meant anything to them, did absolutely fine and became the wonderful people that made my night shifts bearable. However, there were two that stood out to me. The first one is short and sweet. He seemed out of it. My memory is not super clear, but I'm fairly certain he was stoned. The specific event that made me heavily advise we did not hire him was the branded ice cream cup with varying toppings whizzed in. I did an example one, grab the cup, put it under the nozzle, pull the lever, get it filled to a certain level, release the lever. Toppings on, lid on, spoon in, whiz it up. One delicious branded ice cream cup. He grabs a cup, puts it under the nozzle, pulls the lever, gets it filled to a certain level, continues past the certain level, past the top of the cup, and continues for a further six inches. At this point, I have to step in between him and the machine. He appears to have no idea what he did wrong. My second one has a bit of a story behind it. I was talking to my ex in a morning class. We broke up fairly amicably a few years before after a relationship of just a few months. We were on friendly terms and both way over it. And he mentioned his girlfriend was doing her interview at my place that night. I mentioned I was on that shift and likely to be running her trial. I was actually quite excited to finally meet her and looked forward to my shift. She arrived, had her informal chat, and was given her shirt to start her trial, and was brought out to meet me. I greeted her happily and told her my name, genuinely friendly and pleased to see her. 
She responds in a snarky tone with, Actually, I'm terrified of you. Which threw me. To this day, there's nothing I can think of that would have caused this specific response. I decided she was nervous and that I'd carry on as planned and try to make her feel as comfortable as possible. The following hour was a complete crap show. I don't think she was incompetent, but she was the absolute rudest person I had ever come across. She would thrust orders at customers, would not say please or thank you, half shouted in a confrontational way the entire time at customers, and when one politely asked if they could have some barbecue sauce, she threw it, not into their car, at them. Her hour was eventually up, she followed up with a manager, got changed, and left. We usually called them an hour or so later to let them know, giving me time to talk with the manager and give them a rundown. I explained the situation and said that, if anything, I'd gone in with a positive bias, but that I highly, highly advised we did not hire her unless we wanted a serious complaint on a nightly basis. He told me that in the follow-up, she shouted at him and said she didn't want this crappy job. The next morning, seeing my ex in class was awkward, but he wasn't surprised. Following up with other people that knew her, apparently she was generally quick to anger and had a real issue with me just because we once dated. Happy to report, said ex is now happily married to someone else, who seems very sweet. They have a kid, all is well. No idea what happened to my interviewee. I hope she's found a way to live with more peace. <laughs> Maybe she needed to be the one who put that that post out about not wanting to work with any customers because oh my god you can't do that in a customer service job oh my god and like just your trial run it's not even like it's not even like you had a bad day and you just snapped and you were over it like it's, it's, it's your trial this one was cross posted from r slash oops didn't mean to mom tried hiring him he did not get the job can you come by today to speak with me? And if so, what time? Business or personal? Just asking. Uh, I don't think we have anything personal. Well, you're just kinda hot. Sorry. Sorry about that. A friend was playing games with my phone. <laughs> the worksite still says in progress. Any news? N no. The news is you're not hired and you just need to lose lose this number a local mexican restaurant posted an opening on facebook mary here is the perfect candidate hi my name is mary around the tri-state verbia i have 35 years as restaurant executiver both front and bisque of house i can walk in my dining seria and a spot on 10 monutes or less who is having problems why and jump on to fix the problem if you aren't able to do that you need to learn why you cannot this is not just bob's burgers it is be you time and space to make it or betake it i would like to come in tomorrow with my resume and discuss possibilities for employment blank and leaves messages i know my training was from professionals in the field known by reputation and longevity Mary, don't do that. Don't. No, oh, honey, honey. Hopefully they had an email to contact or you like can contact the page, but like also don't do it on your phone. Don't. No, no. Oh, no. No, dear. No. The longer she stayed, the trashier she got. This has to be the funniest slash scariest interview rejection I've ever been involved in. Strap in, boys. This is gonna be a long one. Cast, me, resident a-hole. Marie, stupid but savable supervisor. Burnout, decent enough stoner dude. Crazy lady, self-explanatory. Chris, kick a security guard. The background. Years ago, I was a supervisor for a government contractor call center. We were under the gun, thanks Fox News, and had to hire way more people earlier than expected for the launch of the health insurance marketplace. Normally, we would have full phone interviews prior to scheduling an in-person interview. Due to time constraints, we went from application to in-person to offer most of the time. 
This was not a complicated job, just be able to read, type, and speak with some level of normal human emotions, and boom, you're hired. As you can imagine, this led to some less than ideal people getting the job, but also means you have to be pretty awful to not get the job. Interviews were run by two to four supervisors, so we could clear a room of 20 people in an hour or two. The story. Marie and I go out to the lobby from the HR area to get our applicants for interviewing. I call Burnout's name, Marie tries to call Crazy Lady, but messed up her name bad. It was an ethnic name, so phonetically it looked more complicated than it really was. Crazy Lady scoffs and says, ah, actually, it's Ashley. And off we go to the interview area. I took the one closest to the door, Marie took the area in the corner, so we had one cubicle between us, so if things got crazy, we could hear the other. Burnout is breezing through the interview when we get to the script reading portion. While he's reviewing it, I hear Crazy Lady start reading it and messing it up royally. It's not a complicated script, written at an 8th grade level as most government approved information is, so that the general public could fully understand without needing a large vocabulary. The smallest of words I remember she messed up were security, medicare, approved, benefits, association, and premium. I start laughing when Burnout has started reading and looked really offended, so I apologize and told him I could hear the other interview and she messed up the script pretty bad. Burnout stops trying to read and listens to Crazy Lady go through it again, messing up worse this time, and he starts to chuckle too. I get him to finish the script, which he nails, and I take him to the holding room where we deliver on-site offers, then head back to the interview area to fill out his paperwork. I hear Marie, rightfully so, thank Crazy Lady for her time, and start walking her out to the lobby where she'll be told, we'll be in touch with next steps, when really, there won't be any next anything. Normally, when we do this, the interviewer walks the candidate to Chris's desk, where they walk back out the front door. Marie just walked her to the lobby area and came back to HR without making sure Crazy Lady left. After I finish paperwork, I get ready to go in and explain to the candidates in the holding area that they all got the job. As soon as I walk out of the HR area, Crazy Lady is standing there, getting more and more agitated, asking, ah, How come these peeps got the job and I ain't? A bit confused, I asked how she knew she wasn't getting the job, and apparently one of the other supervisors had told his candidate that he would be receiving an offer prior to getting them into the holding area, and basically he told everyone who walked in, so one of them told her that was why they were sitting in there. Cue the attempt at being diplomatic and non-committal without telling her exactly why, so I say... These people had all of their background checks and references come back already. We're still waiting on yours, so that is why you aren't being given an offer, but that does not mean you won't be receiving one. Here's the best response I've ever heard. Uh, is this because I got warrants for that mail stealing thing? Chris loses it. He laughs loud as heck, which makes me break and laugh too. Crazy lady is not amused. She takes a swing at Marie, misses, and nails me in the shoulder. Still laughing his rear off, Chris grabs the lady, puts her in restraints, and calls the police to have her arrested. While sitting there waiting to give my statement and talking to Chris, crazy lady pipes in, So does this mean I might still get the job? <laughs> I guess that's one way to technically get yourself in the holding area. I <laughs> anyway, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and drop a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Really quickly, I'd like to thank my patrons. Up on the screen, you should see my face palmers and my crazy case. <laughs> Thank you all so much for supporting me in that way. If you're interested in becoming a patron, checking out the original posts from today's video, or sending me an email for possible inclusion in a future video, all of that information is in the description box, so be sure to check it out. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!